Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. And in this Revit video, we're going to take a look at adding page numbers or sheet numbers to our title block templates. I, it's not something I would necessarily do all the time. Um, in fact, I received a question in a video comment that was looking for actually how to do this and how I might do it. Well, just like anything in Revit, there's a hundred ways to do things. Uh, most of them are not ideal. Most of them are not, I guess you'd say, the best way because there's probably only one best way. And, and honestly, the way I'm going to show you is somewhat simple, but it's it's one of the better ways. I'll say that. It's not like the perfect way because I'm sure there's a very, very in-depth way on how to do this. But what the way I'm going to set it up is where it's it's fairly simple. It's simple enough for you to follow this video get it done and something that you can continue to use in your title block. So I'm in just the basic sample project for Revit. I mean, nothing fantastic here, obviously, but what I want to do is just the fact that I have these sheets and that I have these title blocks. And we can see that if I select all of these title blocks in my project, I can see that, yes, I have six of them, which does correlate to the number of sheets here. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go into the title block itself. And the first way I would, sh I would say you could do it, um, which is not the way I'd recommend is obviously we can make text and we can do this. We can do X of X sheets. So like, let's say we have uh, 12 sheets or in this case we have six sheets, we'd have six. So we could always leave this at six, which is nice. But then for every single sheet, we'd have to find a way to, make this some sort of instance property, whatever. So like, that's fine. Um, it's text, but if you even, if you wanted to do text, obviously you could just dump text onto the sheet itself. You know, like you can literally do it here. I don't want to do that. I want to make this a little more, I guess you could say smart. I'm not, I don't want to use the, <laughs> say that this is smart or the smartest way, but this is a good way to do it. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to do this using a label. And I'm not, labels are, are fairly simple in that they are using parameters. So I have these lists of parameters here, which is, you know, they're my list of sheets. And unfortunately, it's not just easy enough to make one that's associated to all the sheets and the sheet numbers. And, you know, how would you tell that parameter which sheet number, not like actual sheet number, but the number like sheet three of six, how, how would you tell it it's three? I'm sure there's some way, <laughs> I'm sure there's some way, I don't know, off the top of my head, it seems quite complicated. I, I, I think it would be easier to get the total sheet number, but even still, that's not necessarily easy because you're then pulling from sort of a sheet index cumulative, so like a total of six sheets, how you get that total out into a parameter, into a label, I don't know, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to make parameters, we're going to make our own. So I'm going to come in here to new. And so if you're not familiar with shared parameters, they're a little more complicated than regular parameters. But for the sake of this video, it's going to be simple. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can. I'm, I'm, I don't have a separate video for shared parameters yet, um, but I want to keep this simple. So we have basically, we're going to come in here in the label. We're going to add a parameter because nothing here is, um, we don't want to use these defaults, but we're going to come in here and we're going to add a parameter. So let's go ahead and make a new group. So I'll just go ahead and edit this and we can go ahead and make a new group. So I'm going to call this, I don't know, sheet. And within sheets, we, this is just a group for parameters to go in. <laughs> so then we have parameters. Well, we need to make a new one. And because uh, we want to associate each one of these values as in like sheet three of six, we need to make sure that three and six or that first and second value are each their own parameters. So the title doesn't really, really matter, but we definitely want to give them a title. So maybe this one is total sheets. Oh, that makes sense. And we want this to be an integer because we don't want to have, for example, 2.37 sheets. That makes no sense. We'd never have that. We'd have two or three sheets of six. And so in this case, total sheets is an integer. Common discipline's fine. We click OK. We also need another one, which is going to be I don't know, we can just call this sheet number. Like this is going to be the sheet number. So three of six in the case. Also here, we want this to be an integer. Okay. So we have this two. We'll click okay. If we highlight our sheets group, we can see our two parameters in there, which are great. We click okay. 
and we can see that there's total sheets and we are only going to be able to add one at a time. So I'll add total sheets. So there's total sheets and I'll go ahead and select a different one, which is going to be my other one sheet number. Okay. Sheet number. So there we go. We have sheet number, which we want to add in here. Then we have total sheets, which we want to add in here too. And as a sample, I don't want them to say their parameter name. I just want it to say X like we had before. So X, whatever. And now the, the only thing really that's left is I want to put a suffix or a prefix. It doesn't matter depending on where you want to put it. I want to put a suffix after the first one or sheet number, which is space of space. And again, you can customize this however you want, but I'm just showing you this. Basically, we want this space of space to be either here, which is after the first parameter, or as a prefix before the second one. doesn't matter. So, okay, that's great. Then there's our sample. Cool. Now, if we click on it, I want to make sure that um, I have this wide enough, you know, one, uh, obviously have this at the right size, you know, you can change, change your size there. Um, I would actually change them, make a new type and change the sizes here. This is all obviously in metrics, Blech, doesn't matter. Um, after this, you can uh, change the way that you have this aligning. So I, I mean, I'll center this or I'll have it right or whatever. Um, I probably want to put this, you know, down here. I don't know. It, it almost doesn't matter, but I probably want to actually right justify it if, if it's down there. So I'll put the right and then just have it align with whatever. It doesn't matter. That looks pretty good. And so basically every sheet number is going to, is going to show up down here. And this is probably a little too big. So maybe I'll, I'll make it a little smaller. That's probably a good size. Looks good. Okay. So now with that done, I just simply need to load this into my project. I don't, I'm not going to save it. It doesn't matter. So I'll override it and we can see that there's nothing there except whenever I click on uh, the template, the sheet template itself, there's that question mark. And so, you know, how do we fill that? What do we do with this? Well, the, the question mark does nothing right now. And so this question mark is telling me that I need to associate those shared parameters with my actual project. I need to bring them into my project in some way. And so how do we do that? Well, uh, we're basically, this is basically like 101 for shared parameters. Uh, because we've made those shared parameters in the view template or in the sheet template family, what we're going to do is come up to manage. We need to add those as project parameters in our project so we can access them. So let's go to project parameters. You would think shared parameters, but actually project parameters. We want to add, and instead of making one and blah, blah, we want to actually go to shared parameter. And whenever I click shared parameter, all of this is going to be basically go away except the select button, which is great. And again, we'll see this, these groups that we're used to seeing that are associated to our shared text file. And so there's sheets, and then boom, there, there are both of the parameters that we made. So sheet number, I'll add that one, click OK. And the last thing we have to do is we have to select basically a category or I guess I'd, uh, a more, an easier way of saying that is not necessarily the category, but even though it is the category, where do we want this parameter to be associated in Revit? And that's based on category. So I want this to be accessible on a sheet. So I have to come down here and lo and behold, there are sheets. So I can check that. And so, I mean, I could check whatever, you know, this could be accessible anywhere. I don't need that or want it because it doesn't show up anywhere, but on sheets. So on sheets, it's checked and I can click. Okay. I definitely want this to be an instance because I don't want every time I have this on a sheet that I have to make a new type for it to be a different number. So I want this to be instance for sure. So I'll click. Okay. And then great. So I've made that one. And now I, I then I want to add another one and we're going to add the other one. And so I'm going to come in here and go to sheets and then total sheets. Click OK. I've added it all there. And again, we need to go to sheets and associate it to sheets in our project. I'll click OK right there. And there we go. So right now, boom, we have them. They are now associated to our Revit project. And if I click the title block again, I can see that I have the question mark, but now I can click it. And if I hover over it, you can see edit parameter show up. And then we can see, oh, look, we are familiar with this now. And so we we have, you can, you can see what's built in. We have these spaces, one and one that are built in, which is basically saying I have one of these parameters. And then I have my suffix after my sheet number, which is built in, it's blocked out, it's grayed out, I can't edit it, which is perfect. That's what I want. I've done this on purpose. So then 
this happens to be the first sheet is the title sheet. So this is a value of one. And then my total sheets, well, we know how many sheets we have, which is six. So I can put six there and click OK. And look, look, one of six. And now I could come back in here and I decide, well, I want this to say sheet one of six or sheet whatever. Well, I can always come in here, edit my label, and then add a prefix that is sheet space. Okay. I mean, there you go. We load this back in. Don't care to save it. We overwrite it, and then we get sheet showing up right there. So cool. That's nice. And we go to the next sheet. You know, obviously, there, this is the tedious part. You have to go sheet by sheet and do this. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that necessarily so much, but this is a quick fix, especially for smaller projects that want to do this. It's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to try just on the fly here is go to Manage Pro Project Parameters. I want to come into my total sheets, not my sheet number, my total sheets. I want to modify this. And of course, we can't modify this because of what it is. It's a shared parameter. I've basically baked it into my project. So I'm actually going to delete this. And I want to, of course, it'll remove the data. But I want to re-add this, but as a type parameter. Because I want to just basically give it to the total sheets in my project. Now, <laughs> if that's changing all the time, it may not be the best idea to do that. But for the sake of this, we're going to give this a shot. And you'll realize that... Oh, because I've chosen a type, I can't choose sheets. And that's just the way it is. Sheets are basically independent. They're kind of built in to be instance parameters, instance on their own. They're really one by one. So as soon as we choose instance, actually, we can come up here and search sheet. But if I go to type, it goes away. So, you know, it's not the end of the world that it has to be an instance parameter, but it is the way it is. And that's okay. So then we can come back and we can see, all right, sheet one of six. And you just know that you'll have to do this sheet by sheet. Um, whether you want to do that or not is kind of up to you. This, in my mind, is a lot cleaner. It's not necessarily a lot smarter, but it's a lot cleaner than text uh, because it's all built in. I'm not going to move it around by accident. I'm not going to, I really won't forget to do it because I'll clearly see that sheet X of X or, or really nothing there. There won't be anything there. So with that, um, I think that will do it for this video because we, we've we basically looked at how we can add these sheet numbers to the bottom. Um, the formatting, the placement, all that is kind of up to you. You can do whatever you want with that. Um, in general, this is not something I do. Um, unfortunately, this is really the best that I can do when it comes to having this not be the most advanced video in the entire world to put page numbers on. I wish Revit sheets work more like InDesign where you could just literally put page numbers at the bottom and depending on the page number itself, it would actually tell you the page number. Revit isn't that smart, apparently, even though I know it is. But nonetheless, I think that will do it for this video. If you did happen to learn something, please, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out. It tells me that you might have learned something. Uh, also, let me know in the comments if you'll use this at all. I know I, I won't, but I definitely wanted to respond to one of the comments that was asking how to do this because it, it is definitely possible, um, and I wouldn't necessarily do it with text, so I'd do it more like this. So that will do it for this video. Have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.